This video is the first video in a series of videos about PowerPoint 2013 Unit A, which is entitled Creating a Presentation in PowerPoint 2013. After watching this series of videos, you should be able to complete the following objectives. Now in this first video, we are going to be focusing in on the first two bullet points, which is to define presentation software and plan an effective presentation. And in later videos, we'll be focusing in on examining the PowerPoint window, entering slide text, adding a new slide, applying a design theme, comparing presentation views, and printing a PowerPoint presentation. The information that we're going to be looking at today is going to be located on PowerPoint 2, 3, 4, and 5. Presentation software, also called presentation graphic software, is a computer program you use to organize and present information to others. Presentations are typically in the form of a slideshow, which you're actually currently watching uh, on your screen now. Whether you are explaining a new product or moderating a meeting, presentation software can help you to effectively communicate your ideas. You can use PowerPoint to create informational slides that you display, or you can create speaker notes for the presenter and handouts for the audience. And of course, in addition, you can also create broadcast and outline pages as well. If we take a look on this other slide, and this shows us just some examples here of PowerPoint handouts that we can hand out to our audience, and also notes pages for the speaker, where it shows us the slide as well as some notes that's on there as well. Now with PowerPoint, you can easily complete the following task. First of all, you can enter and edit text easily. Text editing and formatting commands in PowerPoint are organized by the task you are performing at the time. So you can enter, edit, and format text information simply and efficiently to produce the best results in the least amount of time. You can also change the appearance of information. PowerPoint has many effects that can transform the way text, graphics, and slides appear. By exploring some of these capabilities, you discover how easy it is to change the appearance of your presentation. You can also organize and arrange information. Once you start using PowerPoint, you won't have to spend much time making sure your information is correct and in the right order. With PowerPoint, you can quickly and easily rearrange and modify text, graphics, and slides in your presentation. You can also include information from other sources. Often when you create presentations, you use information from a variety of sources. With PowerPoint, you can import text, photographs, numerical data, and facts from files created in programs such as Adobe Photoshop, Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft Access. You can also import important information from other PowerPoint presentations as well as graphic images from a variety of sources such as the internet, other computers, a digital camera, and other graphic programs. Always be sure you have permission to use any work that you did not create yourself. You can also present information in a variety of ways. With PowerPoint, you can present information using a variety of methods. For example, you can print, out, you can print handout pages or an outline of your presentation for audience members. You can display your presentation as a an on-screen slideshow using your computer, or if you are presenting to a large group, you can use a video projector and a large screen. If you want to reach an even wider audience, you can even broadcast the presentation over the internet so people anywhere in the world can use a web browser to view your presentation. And finally, you can collaborate with others on a presentation. PowerPoint makes it easy to collaborate or share a presentation with colleagues and coworkers using the internet. You can use your email program to send a presentation as an attachment to a colleague for feedback. If you have a number of people that need to work together on a presentation, you can save the presentation to a shared workspace such as a network drive or SkyDrive so authorized users in your group with an internet connection can access the presentation. Now if we take a look now on page PowerPoint 4, we're going to talk a little bit about planning an effective presentation. Now before you create a presentation, you need to have a general idea of the information you want to communicate. 
PowerPoint is a powerful and flexible program that gives you the ability to start a presentation by simply entering the text of your message. If you have a specific design in mind that you want to use, you can start the presentation by working on the design. In most cases, you'll probably enter the text of your presentation into the PowerPoint first and then tailor the design to your message and audience. When preparing your presentation, you will need to keep in mind not only who you are giving it to, but also how you are presenting it. For example, if you are giving a presentation using a projector, you will need to know what other equipment you will need, such as a sound system and a projector. Now, in planning a presentation, it is important to, first of all, determine and outline the message you want to communicate. The more time you take developing the message and outline of your presentation, the better your presentation will be in the end. A presentation with a clear message that reads like a story and is illustrated with appropriate visual aids will have the highest and greatest impact on your audience. Start with the presentation by giving a general description uh, on there and then start getting into more specifics. Second, you want to identify your audience and where and how you are giving the presentation. Audience and delivery location are major factors in the type of presentation you create. For an example, a presentation you develop for a staff meeting that is held in a conference room would not necessarily be as sophisticated or detailed as a presentation that you develop for a large audience held in an auditorium. Room lighting, natural light, screen position, and room layout all affect how the audience responds to your presentation. You might also broadcast your presentation over the internet to several people who view the presentation on their computers in real time. You also need to determine the type of output. Output choices for a presentation include black and white or color handouts, on-screen slideshow, or an online broadcast. Consider the time demands and computer equipment availability as you decide which output types to produce. You also need to determine the design. Visual appeal, graphics, and presentation design work to communicate your message. You can choose one of the professionally designed themes that come with PowerPoint, modify one of the themes, or create one of your own. And then finally, you can decide what additional materials will be useful in the presentation. You need to prepare not only the slides themselves, but also supplementary materials including speaker notes and handouts for the audience. You use speaker notes to help remember any key details and you pass out handouts for the audience to use as a reference during the presentation. Now in later videos we will talk a little bit more about the specifics about what makes a good presentation such as how many words and how many lines should be on a page. Generally there's a rule called a 7 and 7 rule which states that try to use no more than 7 words per line and no more than 7 lines per slide. And we'll talk a little bit about this when we actually go in and talk about evaluating PowerPoint presentations as well. And of course this right here shows just a little bit about storyboarding a presentation where instead of going through and just putting text on a slide right off the bat you can go through and kind of plan out your story and uh, on this case this is going through and uh, utilizing the information that we're going to be using in the walkthrough uh, I'm talking about well, on slide one we want to include this information and on slide two we want to have this information and on slide three this information with the photograph and on slide four we want to have this information and generally it's good to have that outline uh, put into place so that you know when you get to those slides what you want to put on. Finally on page PowerPoint 5 uh, in the yellow box that is underneath uh, this graphic figure A-3 uh, talks a little bit about understanding copyrights. And intellectual property is any idea or creation of the human mind. Copyright law is a type of intellectual property law that protects the work of authorship including books, web pages, computer games, music, artwork, and photographs. Copyright protects the expression of an idea, but not the underlying facts or concepts. In other words, the general subject matter is not protected, but how you express it is, such as when several people photograph the same sunset. 
Copyright attaches to any original work of authorship as soon as it, as it is created. You do not have to register it with the Copyright Office or display the copyright symbol, which is a C within a circle. Fair use is an exception to the copyright and permits the public to use copyrighted material for certain purposes without obtaining prior consent from the owner. Determining whether fair use applies to a work depends on its purpose, the nature of the work, and how much of the work you want to copy, and the effect of the work's value. An authorized use of a protected work, such as downloading a photo or a song from the web, is known as copyright infringement and can lead to legal action. So you do want to be careful when utilizing other images or songs, music, or anything else from the web without obtaining prior information first. Uh, generally in the education system you can utilize these things as long as you're not earning a profit from it or you know claiming it as your own uh, work on there so that's generally part of the fair use but uh, usually in business and everything you need to obtain permission uh, to utilize any of this material. And that concludes the information that's on uh, pages PowerPoint um, 2, 3, 4, and 5. In the next video, we're going to be exploring the PowerPoint window.